Now that we know a little bit about objects, we'll use a real-world example to show how we could create a function that would manipulate an object and, you know, change the way the object is moving. And we'll, we'll start off with what we might have for like a, you know, if you've ever done turtle graphics, you might see something where uh, you manipulate a, a turtle by moving it around the screen, turning it, having it move forward, etc. So if we wanted to create a similar set of instructions, we might have something like left, forward, uh, left, forward, right, forward, right, right, forward, forward, forward. If we wanted to think about how this might actually work, if we started off with a turtle at position zero, zero, we'd turn it to the left, we'd move it forward, which means it would turn, to, would be moving to the left, we'd turn it to the left again, so it'd be moving downward, and we could kind of think about how that would actually work. So if we wanted to represent this, let's say instead of using a turtle, we used a car, we could create a function called get position. And that's going to take in a range. But before we deal with what this should actually do, let's build up an object. So I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call it car. And I'm going to, you know, right now this is an object. It doesn't have any interesting properties and it doesn't have any interesting methods. But let's create a new property. We'll call that property direction. And we'll say that this is up by default. So now we have a, a object that's defined in our function and it's got a property and it's the property's name is direction and it's pointed currently up. But we also want to have some other properties. We want to have an x which is going to be 0 and we want to have a y which is going to be 0. So if you think about where this car exists, if we have like a coordinate plane and we have, you know, x and y uh, axes, x moving from the left to the right, the negative side to the positive side and y moving from the bottom to the top, the negative with the bottom and the top positive, uh, we could actually think about how this thing is going to move around. You might want some methods to move this around as well. So given our instructions over here, we have left, forward, and right. So let's work off of that and let's think about how we're going to manipulate this car. Uh, one thing that we might want to do is have a turn left function. So turn left and we're going to say that's a function. And what turn left is going to do is it's going to change our direction based on where we are. So let, let's create an if statement because we're going to need this a couple of times. If direction, uh, we should use if this dot direction equals up. If we just use direction, that just refers to a direction variable that we haven't actually touched. But this dot direction means that we're referring to the direction that belongs to the car, this property of the car. So if the direction is up and we turn left, that means that our new direction should be uh, left else if this direction is equal to left well that means our new direction should be down else if this dot direction equals down well then our new direction should be right and if this direction is right then we should move, be pointing up again. This direction equals up. And if you think about this, we, if we were to turn in a circle up to left, left to down, down to right, right to up. So this will actually work and we should be able to turn our, our car around, you know, any direction that we like. So we have that defined as a function. Uh, we might also want a turn right function, which is going to work pretty much the opposite. Turn right. We'll make that a function as well. And I'm going to just copy and paste all of this content because we're going to do a similar thing, but we're going to have it go the opposite way. So instead of left, this would make us go right. Instead of down, this would make us go up. Instead of right, this would make us go left. And instead of up, this would make us go down. So if we think about that from up, if we turned right, we'd be right. If we were at facing left and we turned right, we'd be facing up, etc., etc. Then we'll create another function called move forward. This is going to be one more function. And move forward is going to use that same if this direction. We're going to just go ahead and paste that code right into here. And we're going to use if direction is up. Well, if we're moving forward and our direction is up, that means we're going to be increasing y. So we'll set this dot y plus equals 1. And if we're moving, if we're facing left and we move forward, then we're going to say this dot x this is going to be moving to the negative direction so I'm say minus equals one and if we're moving down this dot y minus equals one and we're from moving right 
it's going to be this dot x plus equals one. So any of these is going to move us up. So or going to move us in a particular direction. So if we're facing up, we move up on the y-axis. If we're moving, if we're facing down, we move down on the y-axis. If we're facing left, we move to the left or to the negative side of the left axis. Axis. And if we're moving facing right, we move to the right side of the right axis. So we now have a car that's actually pretty well constructed. We have a position for it. We know which direction it's pointed. And now we can actually do the work for this range. So uh, let's go ahead. We, we said we had left, right, forward. So we'll go ahead and process those instructions. So we have this object now. We'll just go ahead and create some uh, a for loop. For var i is equal to 0, i is less than range dot length, i plus plus. Now we're just going to check each one of these. If range i equals uh, forward, well, then we're going to move our car forward. Else if range, if it's left, we're going to move our car left. So turn left. Else if range is right, say turn right. So now we've actually processed this, and if we want to return the position of where the car is after all of these instructions, uh, we would actually we would probably give this a new method. Let's go ahead and create one more method, and we'll call this get position, and we'll make that a function as well. And this is going to return this dot x plus comma space this dot y, just to give us that coordinate there. So now after we've done all of those instructions, where we're going to return car dot get position now if we've done all of this properly we should be able to test this pretty well so if we were to call uh, get position and we just go left and forward if we think about this we turn left we move forward one so we should have negative one zero and we get that there we go so that's good we didn't make any typos now if we change this so that we go left forward left forward we should get negative one negative one so if we change this and get all of these we should get negative one negative one so you can see how this is actually causing our object step by step for each one of these to either move forward turn left or turn right and based on all of these instructions we're doing something so if we were to get all of these we could see where our car would end up after all of that and then we see it's ended up at one negative one and if we added a cup if we changed a couple of these, let's say we change this one to a forward, it's going to manipulate that so we can see this is going to be further to the left, negative three, two. So you can you can see how we can actually use this object because this code at the top, you know, the code at the top is we're creating this car and we're giving it a direction and we, we're writing some methods to kind of think through how this is going to move, how this is going to turn. But when we get to actually the code that works here, the code that does something with these instructions, it's actually very simple. We're just translating this forward to a move forward. We're translating this left to a turn left. We're translating this right to a turn right. So it makes it pretty easy to actually manipulate this object and then find out what actually happens to it. Hopefully this is a good illustration of how you can use an object to kind of abstract some of this complication and uh, create something that's going to be a little bit easier to understand and handle. Thanks for watching.